In sec there are secret details that your father takes notice of. That's how he sees. God's preferences, God's judgments, God's perspective is built on the way God sees and he doesn't look on the outward, he looks on the heart. So the gift of discernment of spirit gives us the opportunity to see the way God sees. Do you get that number two? All right, so number two, three, the gift of discernment is designed to protect us from deception. It's designed to protect us from deception, just like we saw in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, the Bible says, For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So he's adequately poised to deceive, is adequately poised to impersonate. The greatest deal that Satan is engaged in is in the, in the deal of impersonation, the deal of deception. And the gift of the sanment of spirit is given so that we can be protected from deception. Are you still with me here? Hallelujah. We need to be protected from deception. It's a system that God has put in place to ensure that we are not victims of deception. My pastor told me about a man. The man came um, selling a business proposal to my pastor. I mean my pastor in the village, okay? So everything the man would say, ah, by God's grace, Aye, in the name of Jehovah. So that was any, he would punctuate with Jesus' name, punctuate with, by Jehovah's grace, punctuate. And uh, my pastor now invested in a lot of money into uh, the business that the guy brought to him. And that was the last time he ever saw the man. So it means that the guy was a thief in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he was a swindler that, that succeeded in Jesus' name. <laughs> the, <laughs> the gift of discernment of spirit. <laughs> it takes us into uh, the economy of the hearts of men. The moment that money was deployed, released, the guy has vanished Till today. We are not even sure if he's still alive, but that's not the problem. He vanished. That's the problem. While he was making the proposal, it was in Jesus' name, by God's grace. Ah, the Lord forbid it. The God will forbid. Ah, oh my God, the Lord Jesus. Satan is the king of deception. And he knows that he's going to have more access into our companies if he's transformed to an angel of light. Are you there? You know, in, in Sunday school, when we were little children, uh, the Sunday school teachers did not do a very good job because they depicted Satan with two horns and red tongue. I have been looking for that individual till now and I've never seen him. <laughs> I don't know. How many of you, I, I, even in the spirit, I don't know. <laughs> Has Satan ever come to you in that mood? You know, so, uh, we, we grew up expecting to see a double-horned man that is very fierce with muscles. He knows you will not accept him if he comes that way. So maybe that angel, that light you saw. Okay, let me show you one scripture in which Satan uh, is transformed into an angel of light. Can we do that? Okay, let's, let's do um, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by saying. It was a prayer meeting that we're going. 
and many of us will think that Satan will not want to be present in a prayer meeting. But it was a prayer meeting that we were advancing into. And this lady that was possessed with the spirit of divination came for the prayer meeting. And her history is that she brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Satan has been transformed into an angel of light. It's as if he's speaking by prophecy. See, if you, if you, if you look at this presentation at face value, you will say, okay, God is trying to bring credibility to the ministry of Apostle Paul. Notice that her prophecy was not even directed at a church member. It was directed at the head of the apostolic coalition. All right? You know the kind of leverage and access the lady is going to have, the kind of promotion she's going to have once Paul adopts her, once Paul brings confirmation, once Paul brings endorsement that this is a prophet. You know what I would have done to the fellowship? She would have been the one controlling the fellowship with her divination. And there are many ministries like that that have been trapped by divination. You know, my pastor in the village told us a, um, an experience he had. His own pastor, who was the evangelist that brought revival to our people. All right? Uh, he was a very strong man. They say he used to do dry fasting. Dry, no food, no water, and he's preaching every day, leading prayer every day. Leading prayer every day, preaching every day, continuing his dry fasting. He was a very powerful man of God. I remember I was told by my pastor how that this man, there was a mad girl. I don't know how she became mad. And during his dry fasting um, days, the days he does his dry fasting, he moved around the town and saw the girl mad and slapped her on the head. And that's how her sanity came back. The parents of the girl, because she, had, she's, she was like 12 years old, the parents of the girl dashed him the girl. Have you heard of such things before? I, I thought it was in, it was those days they used to dash you. Man, they, see, you, he slapped her on the head and the spirit. So I'm talking about a very powerful man of God. But unfortunately, this man of God now went and brought a woman who um, claimed to be a prophet, brought her to minister. And while that woman, obviously with the spirit of divination, and while she was ministering, the madness that he casted from that girl, that madness came back on that girl. And that was how that ministry, it was a powerful Pentecostal ministry. That was how that ministry started dying till he died. Because of one, one entrance of a spirit of divination on the altar they had built with sweat and prayer for years. And it came to pass one day, I went for a meeting and I saw that evangelist. That was my pastor's pastor. And I prayed to God and I said, Lord Jesus, let me not end up like this man. Do you know how powerful that man was? Uh, huh. I'm talking of a man that, one man, and he breaks the yoke of witchcraft among the people. One man. But the man could not discern that the woman he brought to minister for him Hatch was a high priestess in the way of divination. And as she began to preach and say the things she was saying, the demons that accompanied her began to invade the building. And the madness that was taken away from that 12-year-old girl, he came back. And you know what? When that madness came back the second time, that man was not able to help her again till, she, till the girl died. Are you there? Now that's why they are, people that preach here are not many. A lot of people have insulted me publicly. 
and say that I'm proud. I'm... Let us just be serving God, eh? <laughs> Let all of us be just be serving God. Do the one you know. If you know how Jesus likes his people, the people he died for, if you know how he loves them, you will, you will discipline yourself as a pastor. Oh. Are you there? All right. So I've seen, I, I've been instructed, I've been properly instructed that peop, by people that have encountered God and people that have had spiritual experiences. And that is the way I live my life the reason why I live my life the way I do. Now, we need to be equipped because these gifts of the Spirit, you don't just need them for crusade. You need them in your office. You need it in your business. You need it in your family. You need it when you are going to the market. If God knew that we will not need to discern, he will not give us the ability so to do. So in this 